Hello everyone, welcome back to GK Code Lab. Today is the second session of our complete AWS series. So if you know in our last uh, session, we have discussed briefly about the entire architecture of AWS. And we discussed all about regions, availability zones, local zones, wavelength zones, regional edge caches, and how this all is connected. Everything we discussed in our last session. Now, there is much more as we zoom into uh, the architecture part, such as VPCs, subnets, but uh, I thought of taking the initial steps first because uh, many of you along with me have already created your AWS accounts and in our last session we set up the billing for that. So uh, in this session let's uh, discuss the uh, some of the very basic topics of users, groups, roles and policies. These all lie under the IAM service of AWS but as we will be doing the hands-on these are few things that we need to set up as well. So why not understand them first and once we understand these basic things, the other part of the architecture will be uh, very easy for us in the hands-on perspective. So overall in this session, let's discuss about users, group, roles and policies. Now, once we start learning about the AWS IAM, these four important things are very critical to understand users groups roles and policies now users uh, as the name suggests and we already uh, know as we have recently created the aws account so with that root account a root user is already created now with the iam what specifically we are talking is iam users so any person that can interact with the aws console or access their services using any other medium is called a user so that is uh, straightforward now groups as simple as that a bunch of users can be termed as a group why it is important in iam perspective that we will have to understand now a role is something as you can understand which can be assumed by a person or any uh, particular service to do certain task we'll come to that but uh, if that makes sense uh, in layman language you can understand that in a particular society uh, we don't have any car cleaner as such but what if if there is a role and anyone could assume it like for today i assumed it that i'll be a car cleaner and i uh, cleaned the car tomorrow some other person or any other group of person can assume that role and become a car cleaner although they are not car cleaners in layman language but we'll closely understand in iam perspective now the policy policy is a written statement or a json document uh, so to say which defines what permissions any user group or role has so if i define any document in which it is mentioned that this person group or role will be able to access these 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 services and he will not be able to access these services so any written document in such format in aws it is written in json format but any such document which defines what and who will be able to do what in very simple language that is a policy so i hope in the layman terms you might have got the difference between them now let's understand a bit closer first understand about the groups let's say consider any standard it project where we have uh, four different teams admin team developer team tester team and the operations team and we have different number of uh, members in each one of them now for sure we want to give the minimal access what is uh, required so for admin guys maybe the billing dashboard or uh, some of the monitoring dashboards and some of the statistics that are important so we can only give the access uh, to those resources for developers uh, similarly maybe different tools ec2 instances their permissions to create it s3 bucket so on and so forth so what benefit we got in assigning these simple users into different groups is now we can assign different policies to entire groups and whatever access for the resources or the actions that can be done on any resource is defined over a group all the members inside that group will have those permissions so the basic significance of this division into groups is to manage from a single point of control now simply these policies are very complicated and there are very ins and outs on which we'll be doing a good amount of hands-on but hope this makes sense 
how these policies and accesses can be defined and very well maintained when the users uh, are assigned in a group now if you go in any project maybe directly you won't encounter an opportunity to directly create users groups and all so there are less chances that you'll be having uh, the idea what groups and users uh, are there in your project but that's why uh, understanding these concepts are uh, really important now let's quickly see what are roles as I already told you and gave you the example of car cleaner, maybe this will make more sense to you now. Consider something as role. And uh, this time, let's say uh, we have uh, this particular role defined in the AWS. What we can do, we can assign a set of policies to it, like simply what it will be able to do, what actions it, it will be able to perform. Let's say, will it be able to list all the users in the AWS? Will it be able to list any S3 bucket directories? Will it be able to create an S3 bucket? As per the requirement, we can assign a policy document to this role. Now, there is no one as of now as a group or a person attached to this. But where it can be helpful is, let's say uh, there is a user or there is any uh, big data application running on Spark or any, any other application for that matter. And for time being, as their operation uh, starts, for some time or a given period of time, they need access to few of the resources, let's say S3 bucket or uh, DynamoDB tables. But now uh, these users are not permanent. These applications uh, may be running for some amount of time, but temporarily to complete their operation, they need access for uh, these resources, S3 and uh, DynamoDB table. Now in such cases, what we can do, we can let these resources or principles what principle means uh, either any uh, service or any user uh, in in this case these applications and this user what we can make them do is assume this particular role where our policy is attached and once they assume this role successfully they can easily be able to access our given resources for which we have given access in the policy now for the same constraint where we need a temporary access or for a given amount of time these principles need to have the sts assume role permission so sts is basically security token service this will come in our course once we uh, interact with the apis or directly with the application in our hands-on part but to understand this security token service manages uh, this temporary assignment of the roles so that for the time being the principles can assume something assume some role which has the policy already attached and uh, complete their work so i hope the roles part is clear now coming to iam policies as i already told it's a written json document which defines who will be able to use what and do what actions in any of the aws resources but important thing to note here is the work these policies do can be divided into two basic types of policies identity based policy and resource based policy differences in their name itself identity based policies mean any policy that is being assigned to someone on basis of their identity that means either he's a user or he's a group or there is a there is some role which someone or some entity is assuming so there is an identity on the basis of identity if we are providing any policy that type of policy is there is nothing different both the policies document looks almost same but the work they do or the intention with which these json documents are written that can be uh, designed keeping these two different things identity based or resource based so identity based policy can be assigned to a user group or assigned to any role and then comes the resource based policy on the resource let's say uh, s3 bucket or dynamo db table if we assign any policy given policy to the resource directly then that is called the resource based policies now the practical part is very important in roles and policies so we'll have a detailed session on writing these policies understanding the policy flow and their evaluation so we'll continue with that in our next session but for this session let's create a user and a group in the same aws account free tier account that we have already created and let's take this hands-on a bit further so I've logged into my root user account that I created in the previous session. Now on the top right, uh, you can see this is my root user account. Now very quickly, what I have to do is create an IM user. To do that, uh, go to the search 
and search for IAM. Here you can see zero users, zero groups, but still I can see two roles. We'll come to that later. But as of now, I have to create one IAM user. So let's go to users and click on add users. Make sure you have multiple ways of doing that. We will also learn how to create the same thing with the AWS CLI once we set this up. But as an initial step, we should create an IAM user. I'll name it as GKC admin. Now we'll provide the console access to this user as well so that uh, using this user we can log into console but in case there are multiple users and you just want to give them specific uh, uh, privileges and not the actual UI login you can leave this blank. Now here I want to create an IM user. I don't want to use auto generated password. Let's give custom password and I'll uncheck this for now. Uh, otherwise uh, once this user logs in he'll have to recreate the password and click on next now here you get permission options as user to a group no because we don't have any groups and here you can directly click next so my username is gkc admin there is a custom password and that's it these tags are very important but as you know we'll be learning them throughout this series click on create user so here you can see we get a console login just briefly you can see what is this this is nothing but your account id 5277 if you look closely here you will get 5277 this is your account id and then sign in aws amazon.com slash console so we'll copy it somewhere and the username password we should remember return to users list here it will give you the warning that you have not downloaded the file which contains the password we can click on continue but make sure you remember the password now as you know the name admin that i have uh, chosen behind creating this user my intention was i would make this as an admin user what i can do for that if you remember my previous slide we can make a group inside that as of now let's say gkc admin is the only user that uh, happens to be uh, having the admin access but later uh, in the time maybe there is some other user which needs to have the admin access so i don't want to apply any policies directly to this gkc admin user i would prepare a group in which i will add in case uh, there are any more users in the future so for that i'll go to user groups i'll create a group and i'll name it gkc admins or better i could say gkc aws admins now here it lists all the users but uh, let me show you from the very scratch i'll not click it right now but for the policies attached to this i will search for administrator you can see these are aws managed policies which do have exact policy documents which we will uh, learn in this session as well but they have predefined json documents which uh, infer to be the administrator access or read only access or cloud front access but as of now let's make this group have the administrator access if you want to see what accesses this will provide you can click on this plus icon and directly you can see very small policy document that is allow every action on every resource so that makes it admin and in next session let me remind you will be these policy documents can get very complicated and that is what we'll be discussing in next session but for creating our group let's go down and create group sorry first we have to add this administrator access click on this and create group now you see we have a group if you click on this you will see under permissions tab we have administrator access under same user groups either you go back or you can come back on the groups section again you have users and here you can see although our user was created it's not added under the admin group how we can add it add users and click on your username if in case there are so many you can search it from here right now we have one we'll just click it and add users so now we have one user that is gkc admin and it has under permissions section you can see administrator access 
Now, this is what we'll be using throughout our series. We will not be using the root account. From now on, how we will be logging in? Let's log out from this root account. And directly you can see our account ID is populated. Here you can give your IAM username or the password. If not, if you have lost that URL, no worries. You can go to console login. And here on this screen, rather than what we were already using, root account we don't want to use that anymore we will click on iam user and here we have to enter that account id and once you do next you will get the same page let's enter our username and the password sign in now here you can see we are logged in as gkc admin with the same account id iam user here you can see we are now an iam user and this is what we'll be using you can see few warnings here because we haven't set up the MFA that is multi-factor authentication. The ways to do that, if you are already in a working environment, you might know what is MFA. If not, this is just sort of additional authentication, which many vendors like Microsoft, Ping ID, and some of the Citrix plugins that provide you. And here you can see, we have one group, one users. That is what we have created. Now, I hope you are already doing these hands-on along with me because this will help you to a great extent once we deep dive into uh, critical AWS setups. If not, please follow the videos along and make very good notes of it. So hope you have successfully created your group and users. Thank you guys for watching this video. In our next session, we'll be discussing about policies and rules. And if you have not subscribed to GK Code Labs, please do so and hit that like button to never miss any video in this AWS Cloud series. Thank you guys. See you later.